Hello there, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful black people. I hope that all is well in your world and this beautiful day become a very successful day, a very good day for you and all of your wonderful, wonderful black loved ones. <clears throat> Beautiful, intelligent black people. Know this. A human being is a part of the whole. W-H-O-L-E. All of us, especially the descendants of those 100% human beings that originated on the continent of Africa. We are all part of a whole. And that whole is called the universe. A part, limited in time. A part, limited in time. That is factual. That is true. We are a part, limited in time and space. We are limited in time and space. Do you know that time and space are, will equate to the same thing? They are just in different Forms. They are just in a different format. Time and space are in different formats. It takes three hours to drive, to drive from, for example, Cleveland, Ohio to Columbus, Ohio. That's time and space time and space. It takes three hours to drive 230 miles from Cleveland, Ohio to Columbus, Ohio. It's all about time and space. We experience each one of us will experience themselves. Our thoughts and our feelings as something separated from the rest. My thoughts, my feelings are separated from your thoughts and your feelings. It is a type of optical illusion of our consciousness. If you really think about it, it is a type of optical illusion of our consciousness, of your consciousness, of my consciousness. And, and this delusion... I will call it a delusion. This delusion is a kind of prison for us because it is restricting us to our own personal desires and to affection for a few people that are nearest to us. It is a type of prison. We are a part of that whole, W-H-O-L-E, called the universe. We have a task here. And our task must be free 
must be, our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. That's how we get out of this prison. Do you know that white folks, especially racist white folks, the ones that will say, There is not a racist bone in my body until it is. (laughs) They will say, there's not a racist bone in my body until it is. We must widen, we must widen. All of us must be widening our circle of compassion to embrace all things, creatures, and the whole of nature in its beauty. And that of nature, that's the operative phrase, of nature. Of nature signifies that Those things that are organic are of nature. Those things that is truly part of the whole, W-H-O-L-E. Those things is of nature. And those things are organic. And those things are loaded with melanin, M-E-L-A-N-I-N, my beautiful, intelligent brothers and sisters. That is called healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G. If we can all arrive at that place, especially those things, those creatures, those human beings that are organic, if we can arrive at that place where we embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty, then that is where we need to be. And from that point, we can then go forward and be ourselves. An important question to begin with is, what does it mean to be human? And I would pose that question to those white folks with all of those implicit biases. I would pose that question to, especially this cadre, this army, of white racist cops and these presidents of the fraternal order of police, these mayors, especially these white mayors that are punk ass and weak enough to allow the fraternal order of police to gather all of this power and then take that power and use it against the people that did the legislature to give them the power in the first place. What does it mean to be human? What impact has centuries of dehumanization of black folks? What impact has that had on black folks? It has been centuries of dehumanization of black folks, people that look like me. Our thoughts, our thoughts are only one factor 
in the creation of our reality. Our feelings are another, and it is often the thoughts of others. That is that double consciousness that I talked about in a previous podcast. Our thoughts and our feelings are often the thoughts and feelings of others that unduly contribute to our self-concept. And if you're black, and if you do not have a self-concept that is very positive, if you do not have a self-concept that equates you as an equal, a self-concept that you're proud of, a self-concept that's loaded with self-confidence. If you do not have that, then you are still delusional. You are still delusional. You are still suffering from a psychosis called double consciousness, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. This this myriad of influence, there's a myriad of influences, whether meaningless or brilliant or of brilliant composition resounds within each one of us black folks. Like jingles, we hear it like we are hearing a jingle repeatedly that we cannot get out of our heads. We are consistently allowing other folks to define us, to define who we are, where we go, what we do, what kind of profession that we choose. It is these voices that too many black folks are hearing that tells too many black folks who they are. Please, my intelligent, beautiful black brothers and sisters, please find yourself within yourself. Stop looking for yourself outside of yourself. You will never find it there. What you are, what you really are, what I, what I'm, what I am, what you are, it's inside of us. It's not outside of us, my beautiful, intelligent, black brothers, brothers and sisters. So the question is, how do we restore the health of black folks? when many of the answers to the healing of black folks lie in what black folks do not know instead of what we do know. And I will say that again. How do we restore healing of black folks, people that look like me. When many of the answers to that healing lies in what we do not know instead of what we do know. How do 
we unlearn much of what we have held sacred. It was all a lie what the white boys have taught us. It was all a lie. To venture here into this space, into this time and space, mean to face the most formidable of foes, F-O-E-S, in the most desolate of places. It means to wonder, W-A-N-D-E-R, perhaps alone, in that remote willingness called the unknown. That's where we have to to travel, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters, in order to heal ourselves. And when we heal ourselves, we will have found ourselves. We will now know ourselves. And knowing ourselves will reveal what our real passions are. And our passions will uncover our purpose. And our purpose will put us on a path to find our destiny. This healing that I'm speaking of comes from a terrain that is unlike any that we have ever seen. We have, it's unlike any that we have ever experienced before because it is in the departure, it is in the departure from the usual that our healing as Black folks must come. Our healing must come with from within us, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. That's the terrain, that unknown terrain that too many black folks have strayed away from and concentrated on the terrain terrain outside of themselves, allowing all things outside of themselves to motivate them, to define who they are. And once we are there and understand where the healing must come from, we must question, we must question what we are and how we have been. We must question that because that has informed us that all of this time and space, we've been on the wrong path. We have been looking for ourselves in all the wrong places. We must examine our new eyes, E-Y-E-S, what it means to be a black man, a black woman, a black child, a good friend, a spouse, etc., etc. We must answer for ourselves what we expect from adults and children, what we believe about wealth, and poverty, success and failure, we must inspect all of those things once we realize where the healing must come from. And after we carry out this type of inquiry into who we are, where we are, and where we should look for ourselves. We must have to 
we then must assess, we must assess the value and youthfulness of these ideals. We must use that looking within concept to form our, that looking within precept we must use that looking within ourselves precept to form our concepts as we go forward. And from that point on, we will always be continuously growing and developing as human beings. And throughout our lives, we will achieve various various tasks that are associated with each developmental stage. That's how we should be in this space, in this time, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. And I would say as an ending, Stop looking for yourself outside of yourself. All of you, all of the things that you need, that I need, is inside of us. The real, the real you is within you. The real you is within you. The real me is within me, my beautiful, intelligent black brothers and sisters. That's what I have on this one. Please go to the thrasherway.libsyn.com.